gentleman. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Barber. Thank you uh, very much for letting me sit in on this hearing. I am not a member of this subcommittee, but this hearing is very important to me, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here to meet the witnesses uh, and to ask some questions. First of all, I want to thank the witnesses for coming today. Some very, uh, I think, helpful testimony. Uh, you know, the men and women of the Border Patrol, who I work with a great deal, uh, face incredible dangers every single day. And you put your finger on it, Chief Fisher, when you talked about the incidents, rockings, um, rip crews that are trying to steal drugs from other smugglers, uh, put people in jeopardy. Uh, Brian Terry, uh, as you know, was killed possibly by a rip crew. So the, the, what, what they are going through every single day is not fully appreciated by the American people. Sometimes when I stop at the checkpoint coming back to Tucson, I say as I am leaving, uh, thank you for your service. And they look at me with a startled look on their face like you are thanking me. No one does that or not enough people do. So I just want to say up front that what your men and women do is absolutely amazing, heroic and very important to our country's security. And I think that um, what we need to do is make sure that they have the resources they need to get the job done. I am very concerned about sequester. Uh, the 35 to 40 percent cut in salaries that the Border Patrol agents will face uh, with loss of furlough, with the loss of overtime and furloughs. Uh, we cannot step back and move backwards from the improvement that we have made in border security. If we do, as the Chairwoman has said, uh, many issues relate to this. The future of comprehensive immigration reform depends on our continued efforts to, to secure the border, whatever that means, uh, Judge. I, I agree with you on that. That is part of the problem. The central question really is how do you define border security? We have been talking about it for decades, uh, and more recently in the last six years we have put a lot of billions of dollars of resources into it. And when I talk to ranchers, for example, and they tell me that they are unsafe on their land and that they can't go to town without taking their children with them and that they go to the clothesline armed or they go on their land fully armed to inspect their water lines then we are not secure from their perspective because they are not safe. Go to Nogales or Douglas where the buildup is significant, people feel differently about it. So it is a matter of where you are and what you are facing. So we have to come to terms with this definition of border security and we have to plug the holes that exist. In my district alone, 50 percent in terms of poundage of the drug seized in this country are seized right in my district, the most poorest area of the country. We have to do better and I know Chief Fisher, you want to do more and, and hopefully we can continue to plug those holes. But when it comes to measuring border security, the issue in front of us today, we really are, I think, not doing a, as good service to ourselves, to the de department or to the country when we cannot have what, what people would consider credible and reliable metrics to define success. And I am alarmed, to say the least, uh, by the most recent GAO report which was referred to by the ranking member that uh, came out and, and pointed out that the Border Patrol rolled out last May uh, a new strategy that didn't have goals, that didn't have metrics, didn't have a process for evaluation. That's not really a plan, is it? And now, obviously, the Department has to do something. So I guess I want to go to that point specifically, uh, Chief Fisher. Uh, you know, I, I have the highest admiration for what you do, and it's good to see you again and what your men and women do. But we have to give them consistent ways of measuring success. So can you ask or can you tell us uh, where we are in the process of developing those metrics that will fill the big holes in that plan? Um, what, where are we right now? The Department promised that it would be done by, this, by November. Could you give us an update on where we are? Sure can, Congressman. First of all, it is good to see you again, sir. And thank you for those uh, kind comments. Uh, it certainly gives me great pride to serve those Border Patrol agents here in Washington. And when I go through the checkpoints, uh, I, I do make sure that I thank them as well. So thank you for doing that. Um, we do have metrics. As a matter of fact, uh, unfortunately, part of my opening statement that I would like, like to share with you really labeled just four or five as examples. When the GAO did that report, uh, they did so. We worked with Rebecca Gambler and her team, uh, provided an array of, of metrics and measures of things that we were looking at as it related to our new strategy. Um, part of their analysis, interestingly enough, was they went back about 2006 to 2011. And as you recall, we just recently, over the, over the past year, just released um, the, the uh, strategic plan. Many of those measures over the past three years we have been gathering, some of which we have been just analyzing differently, some of which we, we created whole new different sets of data, uh, things like the consequence delivery system, uh, things I had mentioned earlier just quickly, the recidivism rate, the average rate of uh, 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 the average 
apprehension per recidivist. We take a look at unique subjects. We look at deflection um, and how that is differentiated between displacement. I uh, uh, welcome the opportunity to sit down with you or members of your staff to go through those in detail, sir. Madam Chair, could I just ask one more question? I know my time is up. Um, it is really important that the Department, when it devises uh, these new metrics that are going to be now completed by November, that the stakeholders are involved in helping you define what success is. I am talking about the business people, the residents, the ranchers, the Border Patrol agents themselves. I talk with those men and women all the time. They have got incredible insights about what goes on, as you well know, because they are there. The ranchers are on their land every single day. What process can you tell us about that will include input from those vital stakeholders before we actually finalize and submit these uh, metrics? Well, Congressman, when I am out in the field and talk with them, the things that are brought to my attention are, well, Chief, can you tell us a little bit about yeah, your ability to see things, your broader situational awareness, although they don't use those terms necessarily. But what they are talking about is our ability um, for broader situational awareness. How can you tell me, either it is technology or whether it is through intelligence or agent deployments, can you tell me what is happening around my area? Because when my dog barks at night, my wife is scared. I understand that perception, right? And, and each area of the border, I am glad you brought that uniqueness out, is very different. Right? And so what we are, are training the organization to do, uh, understanding the direction where we are going and defining this risk-based approach versus a resource-based approach, because you are right, and, and uh, uh, Chairwoman Miller really, really set the stage. I can't go to those ranchers and say, hey, you should, be, you should feel safer because we have an integrated fixed tower five miles down the road, and I just doubled the size of the Border Patrol uh, station in Douglas over the last three years. That, that doesn't change the fact of the perception, whether it is real or not, depending upon what the activity is. Um, our approach with the field leadership is, is to the extent that we are able to, with information, is to explain to them what we have in terms of, of information, what do we know is happening there, so they understand not just, hey, would you call us when you see something suspicious. We want to be able to tell them what that is. The second thing is we want them to know, to the extent that we are able to, what we are doing about it. And in some cases, it may be deployments. It may be, hey, we are going to have Border Patrol agents in the area tonight. Um, you are not going to be able to necessarily see them because they are going to be working in these general areas. Uh, we want you to call them because they are going to have the ability to respond if you see them. We are working some technology you may be aware of um, out in the East County and, and the Douglas area, and I am happy to go into further detail uh, outside of this hearing to do that. I want to thank the Chairwoman, and I would repeat what you and the Ranking Member have said. Please get in this game fully. We need it in order to move forward with comprehensive immigration reform. We will not get there, get there without your help. So thank you, Madam Chair.